This is a 50cc Tao Tao Chinese scooter. This particular scooter is extremely hard to start. And once it is started, it doesn't stay running. Now the fix for this particular scooter is pretty straightforward. It might even surprise you. Now the owner of this scooter noticed the running issue a while back and replaced the spark plug, replaced the air filter, replaced the carburetor, and performed an oil change in hopes of fixing it. Now all of these things are common sources of running issues, but there's one more thing they didn't try. A valve adjustment. Now I'm not saying a valve adjustment is a last resort after you've replaced a bunch of parts. In fact, it should be one of the first things that you check, because after the initial investment in tools, it's totally free. Now speaking of tools, let's take a minute to talk about the tools that you're going to need to get the job done. Now aside from a basic socket set and some wrenches, you're going to need a set of feeler gauges. Now feeler gauges are pieces of metal that have been machined to an exact thickness. And the thickness is measured in thousandths of an inch and stamped onto each gauge. For this job, you're going to need a feeler gauge set that has a minimum thickness of three thousandths of an inch. Now let's talk about what a valve adjustment is and why your scooter needs it as part of its regular maintenance. Now the valves are responsible for letting fuel and air into the engine and letting exhaust gases out. They're also responsible for keeping fuel and air contained in the cylinder during compression and combustion. Now the valves are operated by the camshaft and the camshaft has a lobe on it. As the camshaft rotates around, the lobe makes contact with this portion of the rocker arm, forcing it upwards. Now the rocker arm pivots in the center, sort of like a teeter-totter, which forces this portion of it downwards. Now at the end of the rocker arm is what's called the tappet, and the tappet makes contact with the valve, and is what actually forces the valve down into the cylinder head. Now as the lobe passes the rocker arm, Tension is released, and the valve spring brings the valve back up into the head, sealing off the combustion chamber. Now the tappet is one of the most important parts of this whole system. You see, the tappet is what actually makes contact with the valve, and the distance between the tappet and the valve is referred to as valve lash, or sometimes valve clearance. Now what can happen if you have too little valve lash? and the tappet is actually making contact with the valve at all times, it can hold the valve open. This will reduce your compression and won't allow your engine to run properly. Too little valve lash, in addition to reducing compression, can also hold tension between the rocker arm and the camshaft, destroying both of them. If you have too much valve lash or the distance between the tappet and the valve is too great, it can make valve clatter and your engine will be noisy and it can actually cause damage to the valve. To perform your valve adjustment, start by removing your seat bucket. To remove the seat bucket, remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in place. Usually there's also a Phillips head screw at the front of the bucket, although this one is missing. Then lift the seat bucket out. Next, we're going to remove this front access panel. To do that, remove the floor mat, then remove the two Phillips head screws that hold it in place. Now carefully pull the access panel away from the body, being mindful of the internal tabs inside the seat bucket. We now have access to our valve cover. Next, remove the crankcase breather hose at the top of the cover. 
Now we can remove the six eight millimeter bolts that hold the valve cover in place. If your scooter has these wires attached, keep in mind these are very important engine grounds and they need to be replaced when you reinstall the valve cover. Now, we have access to the clamp to remove the air injection hose. The last thing we need to do is remove the spark plug. Now, removing the spark plug is important because we're going to be turning this engine over by hand. And if the spark plug is in place, the engine is going to be building compression against the plug. Removing the plug allows the engine to spin freely. I'm using a 5 8 spark plug socket. If you look at the fan shroud on the right side of the engine, you'll notice there's a nut cast into the center of the cooling fan. This nut is usually 13 or 14 millimeters. Use a deep socket and a ratchet and place it on the nut. Now, turn your ratchet clockwise. You can see you're turning the engine over. While turning the engine over by hand, you can watch the camshaft move the rocker arms and the rocker arms open and close the valves. As the valve moves downward, it's opening and when it comes back up it's closed. Now we need to put the piston at top dead center of the compression stroke. To find top dead center we're going to turn the engine over until the intake valve closes. This is the intake valve opening and now it's closed. The intake valve is always going to be on the intake side of the cylinder head. The exhaust valve will always be on the exhaust side of the cylinder head. Now I'll take my trusty pocket screwdriver and insert it in the spark plug hole. I'm going to feel for the piston to get to its highest point. You can see the piston pushing the screwdriver out of the hole. Oop, I went too far. If you go too far you can always just back it back up. I believe that's top dead center. Some scooter timing gears will have marks that indicate top dead center. Usually when the lines that are stamped across the timing gear are even with the cylinder head, you've reached top dead center. At top dead center, both of my valves are closed and there should be a certain amount of lash between the tappets and the valve stem. We're going to use our feeler gauge to measure this lash. I'll find the three thousandths of an inch feeler and I'm going to insert this feeler in between the tappet and the valve stem. It doesn't quite fit. This means that we do not have enough lash between the tappet and the valve stem. To adjust the lash, we're going to loosen the jam nut on top of the tappet with a 9 millimeter wrench. Now, by twisting the tappet counterclockwise, we're going to create more space between the tappet and the valve stem. Now, I'm using a special 3 millimeter square socket to do this, but an adjustable wrench will do just fine. You really only need about a quarter turn. All right, so I've got the tappet adjusted so where my feeler gauge just has a slight bit of drag on it. I don't have to force the feeler gauge into place. Just goes right in, but I can feel it touching on both sides. I'm going to hold the tappet in that position and tighten the jam nut with my wrench. 
Now tightening the jam nut usually will move the tappet, so I always check it a second time. And it feels pretty good. I'll give it one last snug and move on to the exhaust valve. If you don't feel comfortable checking for drag with your feeler gauge, you think, mm, is that drag or not? You can always do the one step up method. This is my 3,007 inch feeler gauge and it fits nicely in there. If it is 3,007 inch, that means my 4,007 inch feeler gauge will not be able to fit in between the tappet and the valve stem. Look, it doesn't. That means that I do have 3,007 inch. Now I like to set my exhaust valves to 4,007 inch. Wow, this valve is very tight. You can see there's no movement in this rocker at all. That means that it has constant load on the valve and it's actually holding the valve open. That's definitely the source of our running issue. So I'll loosen the jam nut. And back to tap it off. Much better. I'll check it with my feeler gauge one last time. And I can feel I have good drag there. So snug it one more time. And you can see now this rocker arm has just a little bit of lash and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now we'll just reinstall the valve cover. Make sure that your valve cover gasket is nicely seated in the valve cover. This is also a good time to replace this gasket as this is usually the main source of oil leaks on these little scooters. You'll also want to make sure that the gasket for your air injection is still in place either on this port here or on the cylinder head. Start by installing your air injection tube. We'll get the valve cover lined up and reinstall the valve cover bolts. Now you'll notice there are two sizes of valve cover bolts. There's a long bolt and there's a short bolt. The short bolts are for the air injection port if your scooter is equipped with air injection. If your scooter is not equipped with air injection, you'll just have four long bolts. It's good practice to get all the bolts started before you tighten any of them. Whoops! Remember these? These are those very important engine grounds I was talking about before. You definitely need to have these installed on the valve cover. If you leave these off, I've seen it create starting issues. The starter motor will roar, roar, roar. These don't need to be too tight either. I call that uh, German torque specs, guten tight. And last, but certainly not least, we'll reinstall the spark plug. I like to run it in until it just bottoms out. Then I give it about an eighth of a turn. Right about there is good. The spark plug boot just presses right on top of the spark plug. And don't forget your crankcase breather vent. Okay, we'll reinstall our front panel. Making sure these little tabs go right in their little home. Go back with our Phillips head screws. And now the seat bucket.
Well, after servicing your valves, I hope your scooter's a little more well adjusted. I know this Tao Tao sure is. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If it helped you out, or if you have a suggestion for a future episode of Scooter 911, leave me a comment below. You know, I create these videos to empower people to take repairs into their own hands, and to remind them that a scooter is just a bucket of bolts, and the people who work on them aren't smarter than you. So until next time, keep it shiny side up. Now, now the owner of this scooter, now the owner of this scooter, golly! No, we don't need to do that. Can you see my little Netherlands sticker? Yeah. Send me some hoggle slot, what? If you look, okay. Keep it shiny side up. Dang, it was already on.